and welcome back to Best Kept Secrets. I'm your host, Lele Pons, and on this week's show, we're going to be talking about family secrets. These secrets might be secrets that no one outside your family knows, or they might be secrets that you're trying your hardest to keep from your family from finding out. For me, these are definitely the hardest secrets to keep because my families are the people that know me best, and they will probably know when I'm lying, especially my parents. My mom and my dad can read me like a book. And I can't say anything. I even walk into the room and they're like, what happened? I know something happened kind of thing. So I've learned from my experience that getting anything past them is basically impossible. The only secret I've almost been able to keep was um, I, I threw like this Halloween party at my dad's house a couple Halloweens ago. And it was just like I told him it was like going to be like 25 people and it turned out to be 165 people. And I thought I, I had it all under control. But then he told me, you know, we have like six cameras. So I never told him. But, like, obviously, like, he found out because of the cameras. Not because I told him or confessed. And it was really bad. Like, he unfollowed me on Instagram. Like, he just threw me out of the house. Yeah, so I really didn't keep it. And it was like, you know, like the secret was kept for 12 hours. Today's callers are definitely better than me at keeping secrets from their family. Because um, I really suck. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys about our first caller, Vladimir. Because the secret he's going to reveal today is one that his family have been keeping for years. And one that he's actually been keeping from his children. Now, our second caller is named Jade. And, you know, she's in a really tricky situation. She's recently uncovered a huge secret that her parents have had for years. And now she's keeping that secret that she found out from them. The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material, and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. We have Vladimir with us, right? Yeah, that's correct. Hey, how are you today? Uh, Not too bad. How about yourself? We are dying to know what is your best kept secret. Yeah, so we grew up in Russia and... uh, my family and I were born into a cult. Wow. I was young and I really didn't know what was going on at the time, but it was it was a little crazy. It was a lot of uh, uh, religious uh, figures, a lot of worship, a lot of polygamy. Wow. Um, and uh, pretty much it's a radical group uh, with uh, some sort of standards and beliefs. Um, and there's uh, leadership figures uh, that were in, in our specific group or cult, as you like to call them. They're, the leadership figures were um, polygamous. They held multiple wives. They had a lot of kids. And we were meant not to uh, face them face-to-face, and we were not able to uh, give them eye contact, and we're always to look down. So, it was, yeah, it was a little crazy. Um, and I was... I. I didn't really understand it at the time, so I was fairly young, and you know, just the, just by having some conversation with my family, it was it was kind of crazy. What is the difference between religion and a cult? We lived in a combine. It was just like it, it was our own little world. Uh, it was kind of like a village setting. Everybody worked in the farm. Everybody had a job to do. The male had the primary job, and it was just like yeah, it, it was tied to religion. It was tied to uh, Christianity, a form of Christianity, and it was uh, our and the leadership were, you know, figures that were almost regal in a way uh, where we thought they were godlike. Yeah. Do you know why your parents joined the cult in the first place? Yeah, you know what? It's something that, uh, in all honesty, I have not (laughs) brought up. They don't really like to talk about it much. And uh, it it was something that I, I think they just needed a sense of belonging at the time so you know i technically i was born into it and uh, spent the first uh, 10 years of my life there until we migrated to the states i wonder what made you guys migrate because it's so hard to get out of a cult what was the last straw you know like for 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 someone to be like no this is wrong or like whatever it's going on we need to leave so the crazy thing here too is just that, uh, that we weren't able to leave and the only time that we could get off the combine was to visit my aunt so we went to the my aunts who lived in the city and uh, one time and I guess I didn't know at the time when my family told me about this after is we told them that we went to visit my aunt but what, what we were really doing at the time were they're, they're putting together an escape plan to migrate oh. to the state so r- literally we have to get out and it, w- it was one of those things that they just wouldn't let us leave so we had to under false pretenses 
tell them that we're going to see my aunt, who just never came back. But we ended up migrating to the States. Wow. What what would have happened if, if they knew that you were, like, escaping? I, I think there there were some means of uh, of, of torture. They, I, they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't resort to murder, but they would just, you, you would be held there uh, or where they would keep an eye on you and they would not let you leave. They would, you know, I, I, I've heard of, uh, you know, just as a kid, I didn't really see it too much. There were people beating, beaten or, you know, but I didn't really, really understand it. But I, I would assume just because I don't know the full inside, there would be a lot of, you know, kind of violence and torture. I would, I wouldn't say it would go to murder. I, you know, they would, you know, in the eyes of, the Lord, as they like to call it and say, they wouldn't resort to that nature, but it would go to extreme measures. So I think in my family's case, you know, there was no other choice. There was no other way. They just couldn't leave on their own intent. You know, did things always seem weird to you growing up or did you think it was just normal? You know, I thought it was, that was the way to be because for me, I didn't really know any other way. I befriended uh, a lot of the kids in the, the cult, a lot of the, uh, the uh, kids of the of the leaders. So for me, we played like normal. Uh, the school was normal, and the only time it hit home is like well, once I came to America and really kind of understood that like you're able to go everywhere and you're able to have a normal like social life, a normal school life. So at the time, I didn't really know any better, but now kind of seeing the rest of the world and seeing how that you do have you know freedom and choices. And you are able to get a decent education. It really kind of opened up my eyes. How old were you when you when your family left the cult? I was nine, going on ten. So I think we it, it, the migration process took some time. I, we went through uh, Italy, and then from Italy we came to the states. So you know, I think we left at nine. I came to the states to um, That's insane. It's like living like under this like rock. It's like you weren't even used to the real world. So when you were in the real world, when you when you got outside and, and saw the real, how the whole, you know, like when, how everybody is, did that scare you a little bit? Were you like, oh, no, I want to go back. This is weird. Or were you like, wow, like, wait, we can do this. We can do that. That's freedom. I, it, was, it was more excitement. It wasn't fear. It was kind of like, you know, I, I can't believe that, that this is reality, that the world ah. would be like this. Cause you, you, I was, and my family were so limited and we didn't even know it. And then just to have the freedom, not only to escape, Russia, but escape from cult in Russia to have the freedom of uh, America's choices and the beliefs. It was it was crazy. It was uh, you know kind of like a kid in a candy store. You're able to buy what you want, have what you want, and you're able to go to school with normal kids, which was crazy. I you know for me because it was in the school. It was like it it was uh, one of the leaders' wives or a couple of the wives, and then just a couple of. Uh, the kids and the, there was no real formal education. Was it hard to adjust? I, I mean, it, it was hard to adjust because I was so young. It wasn't as difficult just because, uh, you know, there was the, the migrating to a different country. You find people with the same, um, I guess, backgrounds of different cultures. So you kind of befriend them first and then you adapt over time. So for me, it, it, the migration was a little faster. My parents, it took them some time to adapt. And you know, rightfully so, just the language barrier. And then, I understand it happens to many people who actually come from like other places and like the language. Kids get it faster than the adults. Yeah, but they're they're really brave because you know, just not only to go to a country, but just escape from a righteous group. Because like I and I, I mean, I, I only have assumptions, but you, you know, the, the consequences were dire. You know, and I just they never really had a expressed it to me and a lot of it just you know was conversation i've had with them and they really didn't get it give me all the all the details for probably my own protection but it's crazy so you know i just i don't know what <laughs> how my life would have turned out if uh, they didn't make that break they never even tracked you down the cult like nobody ever like tried to like oh we had to find them i talked to my parents and you know there was they said they had some contact and there was some online presence but they didn't want to make themselves be known so I, I it still exists at least it was around according to just some family members and just from uh, information that i got from my parents but yeah i definitely it's one of those things that you never want to look at you never my yeah. family wants to erase that part of their life and, you know i i 
don't want to look into it. You know, I have kids now. So no, of course. Much. Yeah. And after you moved, you moved to the U.S., did you tell anybody about growing up in a cult? Does your family, your your wife, your kids know? Yeah. But I, so my, my wife knows, obviously, you know, some of my family members, they, they know. They know some of the details. Uh, regarding my kids, it's been, you know, kind of with them, you, you, you kind of tell them just uh, regular stuff to protect them from the world. You kind of tell them, like, so, you know, when I grew up, you know, I had, I was, uh, I, I grew up on different circumstances. I didn't have choices to go to school. I didn't have, you know, uh, means. So you kind of, you, you let them in a little bit without giving them the full truth. Yeah. And then how do you feel about religion? That's, that's something I've been trying to wonder, like, because since you were probably traumatized, so I wonder, like, do you have a religion? Do you believe in one? Do you, what do you feel about them? Yeah. So it, it's really weird because, you know, that. They preach uh, religion. They preach, you know, Christianity and God. But they themselves acted godlike. And, and for me personally, I believe there's a higher power. But at the same time, I don't believe that you know you necessarily have to go to a place of worship. Uh, it's not, you know, you, you do what feels right for you. You have to find what works for you, and you uh, you have to listen to yourself, to listen to your heart. You can't listen to others. Because a lot of times, uh, you know, the, the people that claim they have their, your best interest in heart uh, don't always have don't don't always try to act that way, and that's really what happened to me and my family. So yeah. I'm, you know, I've tarnished uh, my you know my religious beliefs. I've gone, uh, but I, I do believe there's something out there, but I'm very torn and confused about it. I don't really go to any religious uh, gatherings or any religious. Uh, church. Uh, uh, so for me, it's like, and I would never go back. Of right? course, it's just something that's my opinion. What advice would you give to someone currently in a cult, or or to the family of someone who is in one? I would just say this. I, I say, be a free thinker. Think for yourself. Make up your own mind. Be rational about it. Listen to all the facts and see if it really makes sense for you. Think for yourself. Be independent. Don't let others think for you. Thank you for sharing uh, your story with us and your secret. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a good one. That was the first time that I ever met someone that was part of a cult. I mean, honestly, I've seen so many movies about this. And this is, like, very shocking to me because it, it's real life. It happens in real life. And, you know, we're, we're I was born a different way. I was born, you know, not in a cult. And so I don't know what he's going through. And I, But I understand from going from that to, like, the real world must be so super weird it's just like it's the same thing as going from the real world to something different you know sometimes people are really really rich and all of a sudden they're broken like it's a different world so for me it's like the adapting to two extremes is just one of the hardest things you can do as a human being you know but we adapt and and i think his family did the right thing i think he he has a really strong mom and dad and they did the correct thing i feel bad for those who actually wanted probably to leave the cult and couldn't as i said like it's really hard to leave a cult that's why when he I got this call, I was like, oh, he's probably a part of it right now. It's a good thing that he is shielding his kids from the full story. I think that's great. And I, I think it's great that he's never going back. It's not that he was just like, I miss it. No, no, he knows what's, what's up. He knows what's good, what's wrong. And maybe one day he'll be able to open up to his kids about it. But you know what? If I were me, I would not really. It's not worth it. It's part of the past. It should have never happened. And um, I wish him the best. And, and he's in good hands, to be honest. He's, he's moving forward, and that's the only thing you can do. I'm going to take a quick break right now, but don't go anywhere because I'll be right back. Well, we all know that families are complicated. And if you have a family secret that you would like to share with us, make sure to head over to shots.com slash secrets to submit. Also, if you haven't done it yet, please hit the follow button. Now let's get back into it and give Jade a call. Hi, Jade. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. And you? How, how's everything going in quarantine? It's going good. Yeah. I mean, you know, kind of has it trouble staying inside but what can you do can't do anything but you can tell us your best kept secret <laughs> so what is your best kept secret well recently i found out that i was adopted and my parents still have no idea that i know oh wow 
when you found out, how did you feel? Honestly, I was shocked more than anything. Um, I work from home. So I work for my parents and I was going through their um like their files like try and get everything organized and I found one that was marked private and obviously like I run my parents business so I was like oh that's not private for me not to see but I went in and I saw the adoption paperwork with my name and my parents name and I literally just didn't know what to do I was like in shock for a few days and then I just never ended up telling them when did you find out like how old were you um, this was actually only a few months ago. So I'm 25 right now. That's intense. Like, did you, do you look like your parents? That's why you're shocked? I mean, I, I'm mixed and my mom is black. So I didn't really like question anything. Yeah. Um, I don't really know like anything about like my dad's family. Um, cause he moved away, um, when he was pretty young. So I've never met them before. So I never really had any reason to like question anything. How old were you when you were adopted? Do you know in the like the paper? Um, yeah, it was when I was around four or five. Oh, wow. I was so shocked that I put the papers away like pretty much as soon as I saw them. And so like I was trying to like take in as much information like as I could before like someone walked into the room and I don't like have any memory of like anything before my parents so it was just like as you can imagine shocking to find out did you expect anything growing up about this no not at all my parents I mean we just grew up as a normal family um I am an only child and Mm. you know I never thought anything of it um I don't know if like my parents aren't able to have children and that's why they adopted. So like I never really questioned anything. My parents always said that like they've only wanted one child and you know they never had the intention of having any more and I just never questioned it. We were I was super happy growing up. My parents yeah. loved me a lot and like I just never had any reason That's the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. So like I never had any reason to like think like hey, like was I adopted? That's not something that a child typically thinks when they're growing up. So yeah. You know, for me like if I had adopted someone, I would tell them but it's there's never a right time to tell. You know, maybe they yeah. they've tried but there's never a perfect time. It's just when the moment's exactly. right. Yeah. So I think that's what they were probably like they haven't told you yet. So when you when you found out, were you angry at first when you found out? When you were angry uh, for them not telling you? I wasn't angry with them. I know that they were probably just trying to protect me and didn't want me to think that they, you know, love me any less just because they adopted me. They did such a good job making, like, me feel loved within the family. And they, like you said, like, there was never a right time to tell me. Um, I did wish I would have known, but I mean, it doesn't change my family dynamic. It doesn't change like how much I love or care about my parents. I kind of just like, I wish I would have known, you know, I'm in my mid twenties now and I've, you know, established a life for myself. And that's kind of a really big part of my life that I had no idea about. So that's that's the only part. Yeah. That I'm like, Ooh, I wish I would have known earlier, but I definitely don't like love my parents any less or like are angry with them or anything like that i just i just wish i would have known sooner well you're very mature because not a lot of kids would do that and it's very wise and it's the truth everything you're saying is the truth and you're you're correct yeah why haven't you told your parents that you know why why don't you want to tell them i i don't want them to feel bad i know that if i bring it up and i tell them like hey like i wish you would have told me sooner they would have felt so bad and they would have blamed themselves and they would have kind of went down this spiral like I know exactly how my parents are and they tend to blame themselves for a lot like anything that goes like slightly negative in my life they blame themselves for it so I think that if I yeah like if I told them like they would feel so bad and I don't want them to they're such good parents and I know they took me in because I didn't have parents and they did their best job that they could. And I don't want yeah. them to feel like I, you know, I love them any less just because they're not my birth parents. Um, I, I just like, again, like it's kind of like how they didn't find the right time to tell me. Now I kind of can't find the right time to tell them. So you're not planning on telling them anytime soon? I honestly, not at this time. There's kind of like a lot going on. I mean, like with like the pandemic and I know that like they have a lot of worry. So I feel like this, would kind of be like the worst time to tell them um and I honestly I'm still trying to process it myself 
So I think once like I'm comfortable with, you know, with that and, you know, everything is kind of calmed down, maybe then I'll find the right time to tell them. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll tell them when I have kids. I honestly don't know. Have you told anybody about this? No, I haven't. Honestly, I like I always joke like, oh, like, haha, like, what if I was adopted? And they kind of like play it off really well. Um, But I haven't told anyone because now I kind of just like wish I didn't know. I feel like, okay, like if I just like ignore it, I can like go back to pretending like everything's fine. And like my parents didn't keep this huge secret for me. But I'm honestly just like trying to process it still and like I don't know how to process it really I don't know like yeah if I should try and find my birth parents if I shouldn't like do I even want to go down that rabbit hole and like all of like the emotions that would come with that so I'm just like I'm feeling so many things right now do you want to try and find your birth parents eventually I think when I do have kids I would want them to know who you know their genetic uh family is yeah ancestors um yeah yeah, exactly because I mean at this point in my life I'm you know like in my mid-20s my parents have raised me and I didn't feel like I was lacking anything with them um but you know I feel like I kind of owe it to my kids to let them know you know who you know their birth you know grandparents are and like for me to have a relationship with my birth parents, if anything, I would be doing it for my kids and my future family. Yeah, I mean, from what you've told me, they are amazing, loving parents, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. And I and I wasn't lacking anything as a kid and still, you know, aren't lacking anything now. So I really don't see any reason to kind of rock the boat until I have my own family. Yeah. Well, honestly, thank you so much for sharing this story with us. Yeah, thank you so much for listening. You probably helped a lot of people because I know a lot of people that are adopted and struggling and going through the same thing that you were going through not exactly like that like finding out but you know probably they they found out a different way yeah so that that means a lot seriously and i just wish you the best you know uh whether you tell them or not i think what you said is true it's gonna continue being the same they're too good of, of, of parents for you to think that they're not yours for real so exactly yeah yeah bye wow you know what i really liked her attitude not a lot of people as i said react like this she's so mature she's yeah me i'm 24 i would not react like this and she's 25 and she reacted in such like a calm you know understanding like with love manner because if you if you think about it you know adopting a child is because you're you want to give a child that doesn't have love love and what's the bad thing about that now you know obviously it's hard to to accept but the fact that she did so quickly and she understands it's something to applaud And for those right now going through the same thing, just know that there's people that were willing to be your parents, you know, and willing to give you everything because they love you. They do. They really do love you. And whether you're adopted or not, I have friends that are more family than my own family. And if I can't have kids in the future, I would adopt. It's a testament to how loved she was as a kid. And I think her parents probably struggled with whether or not to tell her because they didn't want her to feel like she wasn't loved. Wow, what an episode. Uh, You know, both of them were huge secrets, so I want to thank both Vladimir and Jade for opening up and sharing their family secrets with all of us. You know, family is forever, but can family secrets be forever? After today's show, I honestly don't know. In one hand, Vladimir has had to live with this secret for pretty much his whole life. His family was tight-lipped about the reasons for joining, the reasons for leaving, and even about how they felt about everything that happened in between. And that would drive me crazy. And, you know, Vladimir, I give props to him because he sounds like he has come to accept their decision. But if I were in his position, I don't think I would be cool with not knowing all the details. I'd be so curious, wouldn't you? But give prop to Vladimir and his family because they were very lucky to be able to break away from the cult and leave Russia to start a new life in America. And aside from his wife, Vladimir has continued to keep his history of growing up in a cult a secret, even from his kids, which I probably would do too. He says he wants to shield his kids from knowing too much about his childhood, which I totally understand because he's being a protective dad. But I do think also that as they get older, they'll start to get more curious about his childhood. And I hope Vladimir can find, you know, a way to tell them. And now on our second call, Jade's secret was very heavy. And I felt that because, you know, can you imagine finding out that you were adopted at the age of 25, totally out of the blue? You know, once you find out something like that, you must have a million thoughts and feelings running through your head. 
At the end of the day, I'm glad that she has taken some time to process it all herself before she tells her parents that, you know, their secret is out. And that conversation won't be an easy one. But one thing that was clear to me during this call was that Jade really loves them so much and their parents are fantastic people. And I'm confident that they can get through this as a family together. I mean, I think the, as long as she got through it and she actually, you know, accepts it, that's all that you need from this. Because obviously they know, she knows, they just need to come together and talk about it a little bit. So I have no doubt that... It, it's not going to change at all, the, the family dynamic. And also, I totally understand why she has no rush to find out her biological parents. As she said, maybe when she has children of her own, she'll want to track them down, you know, for to see their history and everything and tell their kids. But for now, the most important thing for Jade is figuring out how to have this difficult conversation with the people who raised her. And I'll be thinking about this a lot this week. And I'm almost out of time, but before we leave, guys, and I say goodbye, we have the question of the week, which is... Do you think it's harder to keep a secret from family or from friends? Like I said earlier, my vote definitely goes to family. I can never keep anything from my parents, but I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about this. Maybe some of you have brother and sisters. You find it easy to keep secrets from them. But uh, when it comes to my, my parents, it's really bad. So head over to my Twitter page at Lelipons and let me know. All right, guys, that's all for me today. I'll see you back here. Same time, same place next week for more best kept secrets. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741-741 for a confidential chat anytime. Bum, bum. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinot, Liz Gailey, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebaj. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week. <laughs>